everyone and welcome back to All About Steph 1 with me, Steph, and welcome to the first episode of my brand new series. If you know me, you know I am a big fan of Marvel and the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and later this year they will be releasing an animated series entitled What If, where they basically explore what would happen if certain events in the MCU had occurred slightly differently. So I thought let's put a formula one spin on it and do a formula one edition so welcome to the first episode where we will be exploring what would have happened if daniel ricardo had never left red bull before i get into this video this is your monthly weekly yearly reminder to subscribe down below if you have not already subscribed don't forget to like the video and comment as well let me know what other what if scenarios you would like me to cover in future videos but let's just get straight into it picture this it is 2018 Daniel Ricciardo and Max Verstappen are teammates. Christian Horner is adamant that Daniel Ricciardo will re-sign his Red Bull contract and be with them for a couple more years. Daniel himself is thinking, where else can I go even if I were to leave Red Bull? But he decides to stay. He renews his contract for an extra two years until the end of this set of regulations and the Red Bull partnership of Max Verstappen and Daniel Ricciardo has been secured for another two seasons. So in 2018, Daniel Ricciardo was the trigger for silly season happening. So we didn't actually expect there to be as many seat swaps as there were, but Daniel Ricciardo obviously was the cause of that. Daniel Ricciardo obviously went to Renault in real life, but he didn't in this scenario, which means Carlos Sainz gets to keep his seat alongside Nico Hülkenberg at Renault. This was a great lineup and it was definitely proving promising things, but obviously if you have Carlos Sainz in front of you, who is a very capable midfield driver versus Daniel Ricciardo, who is a proven race winner, who are you gonna go for? You're obviously gonna go for Daniel Ricciardo. But no matter, because Carlos Sainz gets to keep his seat in this scenario, and Renault gets to have a lineup that lasts longer than a year. So great things for Renault, definitely really positive. But Carlos Sainz doesn't end up going to McLaren. So who is in that seat alongside Lando Norris now? Do McLaren want to keep Stoffel Van Dorn or do they want to keep Fernando Alonso? Well, in reality, Fernando Alonso was not very happy with how McLaren were performing anyway, which means the lineup for McLaren would probably have been Stoffel Van Dorn and Lando Norris, which is a pretty good lineup. But now we're going to move on to the last team who would have been directly affected by Daniel Ricciardo's decision, which was Toro Rosso. In reality, they were always going to yeet Brendan Hartley. He wasn't producing the performances and Red Bull are very, very clear and harsh, often with their juniors who are not performing. So Brendan Hartley is out, but Pierre Gasly does not get promoted to the top team because Daniel Ricciardo is in that seat. The question is, who gets put alongside Pierre Gasly because we had Danny Kvyat or Alexander Albon, so which one of the two of them is it gonna be? I'm predicting it would have been Danny Kvyat because Alex Albon had obviously signed his contract with Nissan Edams in Formula E and then Red Bull had to get him out of that contract so that he could drive in Formula 1. Danny Kvyat at the time was a free agent so it would have been very very easy for Red Bull to slip him into their seat and partner him alongside Pierre Gasly. So the lineups have significantly changed in this scenario and we have a lineup of Daniel Ricciardo, Max Verstappen at Red Bull, Carlos Sainz and Nico Hülkenberg at Renault, Stoffel Van Dorn and Lando Norris at McLaren and Pierre Gasly and Danny Kvyat at Toro Rosso. The fact that Daniel Ricciardo re-signed with Red Bull has now prevented Alexander Albon from getting onto the grid and you know what that prevents as well? All of the good 2019 rookie content that we got because there were only two rookies, George and Lando and so Alex Albon was just not involved in that situation anymore because he was no longer in Formula One in this scenario. Okay, so we've talked about the impact on the seats and the driver lineups around the grid, but let's talk about what the actual effect on the races and the championship standings would have been. It is very likely that Red Bull could have beaten Ferrari to second in the Constructors' Championship in 2019. Ferrari finished the season on 504 points and Red Bull finished the season on 417 points. That is not a massive difference, especially considering the poor performances that the second Red Bull driver was having throughout the entirety of 2019. We know that that Red Bull seat was shared between Pierre Gasly and Alexander Albon, but with the consistency of Daniel Ricciardo and his prior knowledge of the team, 
he would definitely have been able to pick up a lot more points than both of the rookies combined and boosted Red Bull up in the Constructors' Championship standings. Having a competent, consistent and a really impressive second Red Bull driver would have taken some points away from Ferrari and would have given Red Bull some more points. Honestly, Red Bull also had really great reliability in 2019. Max Verstappen only had two DNFs and that second Red Bull car that was shared by Pierre Gasly and Alex Albon only had one DNF and that was in Baku, so that was Pierre that retired the car. But from the second half of the season, that reliability was insane and we know that that is when Red Bull tend to get off the ground and really pick up speed. Daniel Ricciardo would have been consistently picking up points throughout the entirety of the season and do you know how many more points Red Bull would then be on as a result of Daniel Ricciardo's high and consistent point scoring? Red Bull pipping Ferrari to second is not actually a given, but it would definitely have been a much closer fight between the two of them. And that's why Red Bull wanted to promote Alex Albon anyway, because Pierre Gasly was not acting as a competent enough second driver to be able to pick up the halls of points that they needed to compete with Ferrari in the constructor standings. So the consistency and skill of Daniel Ricciardo would definitely have been of benefit to Red Bull and they could have definitely picked up a much bigger haul of points and a much bigger paycheck at the end of the championship year. As a result of all of this, Pierre Gasly does have a very competitive and a very positive season at Toro Rosso because he has not been promoted to the top team too early and he is still managing to learn and develop and become an expert in this Formula 1 car. And now I want to talk about Renault and McLaren. So these are indirect impacts that Daniel Ricciardo has now had. But Carlos Sainz staying at Renault is definitely going to impact how well his year went. So 2019, he finished P6 in the constructor standings. That won't happen because Daniel Ricciardo would have been P6 or higher. And Sainz would have been in the Renault, which was definitely not as strong a car or as strong a package as the McLarens had. I still think Carlos Sainz would have become best of the rest because he has a very impressive ability to be able to extract the maximum out of the car and outperform it. So I do predict that Carlos Sainz would have come P7 in the championship and I think the partnership of Carlos and Nico Hulkenberg would have been really, really strong and would have actually helped Renault carry on the trajectory that they were on and would have actually taken them to P4 in the championship standings. I think a massive reason as to how McLaren managed to snag P4 in 2019 was because of Carlos Sainz and the points that he brought for them. So that's why I think McLaren and Renault would have switched places in the Constructors' Championship, which definitely is going to have an impact a little bit further down the line. In 2019, Max Verstappen picked up two victories. Now, I think we can safely assume that Daniel Ricciardo would have picked up at least one victory. Daniel could have potentially won the race in Mexico because Max was out of contention for that victory and we know that Red Bull is always strong around Mexico. So that would definitely have been a shout for Daniel Ricciardo to win. If we look to 2020, I think the grids will remain fairly similar. Everyone is kind of wanting to have a little bit of consistency before we hit 2021, which, if you remember, was supposed to be the big change in regulations. So the majority of the contracts on the grid were supposed to end at the end of 2020. So hypothetically, we are going to assume for this scenario that all of the seats remain the same. So Stoffel, Lando is still the lineup at McLaren. Signs Hulk is still the lineup at Renault. And the Toro Rosso and the Red Bull lineups are going to remain the same. We would have had a much closer championship fight in 2020 if Daniel Ricciardo had still been at Red Bull. Now, don't get me wrong, the Mercedes exhibited a level of dominance that was incredible throughout the entirety of 2020, and that is ultimately what won them the championship, but they managed to seal it at Imola, which was round 13 out of 17. So with four races to spare, they wrapped up this championship, which is kind of insane considering how short the season actually was as well. Daniel Ricciardo would definitely have been able to pick up a lot more points for Red Bull than Alex Albon was able to do throughout the 2020 season. And so therefore, it would have been less easy for Mercedes to run away and seal the championship so early. Maybe we would have seen Mercedes wrap up the championship in Bahrain or Sakhir a couple of races after, and at least prolong that fight, prolong the inevitable. What the standings might have looked like in this hypothetical scenario is a lot easier to predict than it was in 2019, because Daniel Ricciardo actually finished fifth in real life. If Daniel Ricciardo had been in that Red Bull, he would definitely have comfortably finished fourth in the championship standings 
and it would have brought Red Bull a lot closer to Mercedes in the constructor standings. However, throughout both of these seasons that we've just explored in 2019 and 2020, Daniel Ricciardo is still not getting the most out of Red Bull and what he wants out of Red Bull. He is still being treated as a second driver to Max Verstappen and Max is definitely the driver that is getting priority within that team. So Dan starts to look elsewhere because he wants to start afresh once these new regulations are introduced in 2021 and he's thinking, hmm, let me go and have a chat with a couple of the teams. Renault, right off the back of coming P4 in the championship in 2019, they're thinking Daniel Ricciardo would be a brilliant guy to get in. Yeah, let's have a talk with him. McLaren are also thinking, hmm, I'm not so sure about this lineup of Lando and Stoffel Van Dorn. Let's have a chat to Daniel Ricciardo. Now, because like I said, I think Carlos Sainz was a massive part of the success of Renault and McLaren, I think that Renault is going to look like a much more appealing option for Daniel Ricciardo. However, it is also abundantly clear that McLaren do have a better package than Renault do. In the end, he decides to go with McLaren. So he ends up in the exact same place that he is truly in real life now. This is obviously only one way that this could have played out. Maybe McLaren are going to bring on Carlos Sainz anyway and Carlos Sainz would have still have departed Renault. Or maybe McLaren, instead of keeping Stoffel van Dorn, they would have kept Fernando Alonso and Stoffel would have been able to go to Formula E where he's currently doing a great job. Maybe Red Bull would have got P2 in that 2019 Constructors Championship standings and we could have potentially had a more competitive 2020 as a result. There are so many maybes and so many what ifs in this situation. This is the scenario that I like and I think is quite realistic but i hope you enjoyed this video leave it a like and subscribe down below if you've not already comment either your scenario if daniel ricardo hadn't left red bull or another what if scenario that you would want me to do in the future and i will read and respond but thank you so much for watching and i will catch you in the next one bye guys